to call Nurture. Oh yeah. Run of eight, run of eight, run of eight, and the top eight in WCS Winter. That's kind of interesting. Either way, we are ready. Let's hop into game one between Trap and Elaser. Down here in the bottom right hand side of the map, representing Jin Air Green Wings, the Protoss player in the red. Jin Air Green Wings, trap. No, and up here in the top left hand side in the blue, the Polish player looking to leave a mark. He is. Ego Esports, Elaser. Fire a young player. Mm -hmm. Elaze has got a very interesting history when it comes to the WCS Global Finals, right? Because he made it for the very first time in 2016, made it out of his group immediately, won his quarterfinal match back then against Showtime, and eventually fell in the semifinals. But obviously, fantastic, right? Making top four the Global Finals, the biggest payday of his career Bit up to shock. that point. Yep. It mm. was it was not expected from anybody, right? He was but one of the lowest seeds coming into that tournament as well. Yep. And didn't really win a tournament yet up to that point. Yeah. 2017, of course, was the year where Elaza was able to win a WCS tournament back then in Spain, Valencia. That was awesome. Made it to the Global Finals. And again, he was the one to actually knock out Dark that event, snapping mm. that win streak that Dark had built up against non-Koreans. So he made it into the playoffs again, went up against Special in the quarterfinals, and that was the final round for him back then. But hey, two out of two is great. Unfortunately, as you guys saw in the uh, pre-game interview as well that we had with Elaser, he missed out on the global finals last year. So that's kind of bizarre, going from a semifinals to a quarterfinals to not making it at all. But yeah. now he's back. Yeah, absolutely. You know, he, he's really hungering for those top finishes. And of course, the number one fan of Trap. Of course, he's there in the audience. Audience, GGE Mini himself. He's been touting Trap as the next top Protoss player for several years now. Has been at every tournament he's played. And uh, you know what? Trap has been getting better and better. Mr. Mr. Consistency this year with his very deep runs. And I think what's really impressive about Trap is. Uh, even a couple of years ago, when we didn't consider him as good of a player as now, we were already talking about his ability to control those flying Protoss yeah. units. His, his Sky Commander, I think, was the, the nickname in the Korean scene for him, because his oracles would just always do a little bit more damage than any other Protoss players. Yeah, I think he stood out uh, once and during one of those IEM Katowice a long, long time ago. Not the recent ones, and I know he had an epic series against Serol not too long ago. I think that was last year's edition. But uh, th there was a uh, Katowice many years ago where it was just unreal the way that he contro controlled Oracles. Yeah. I was like, all right, I've actually never seen that before. I mean, his Phoenix play is obviously nothing to scoff at either. And I can appreciate that pick. I'm a man who can appreciate a good Phoenix play. Well, you know, it's very <laughs> standard, right, to dive in with the Phoenix and pick up the Queen mm -hmm. and try to tank the spore damage. It was, it was Trap who invented that. Uh, and in the early months of him doing it, when the Zergs weren't used to it, they weren't used to retargeting the spore crawler on the Oracle, and they would lose so many <laughs> drones. There was like a month or two there where Trap would get so far ahead on economy. Um, now all the Protoss do this, it's a standard maneuver, but you know, he, he actually pioneered that. Obviously, plenty of storylines to talk about, plenty of history for all of these guys. They've only played against each other once in the entire career, so that's not really that relevant. It's a long time ago as well. Let's talk strategy pick. I am expecting a rather aggressive Elaser in this series. Is there a chance that Elaser is going to do some of that Swarm Host Night as we saw the Korean Zergs bring out in Group A? I think we'll see that in one of the games. I don't think he will do that every game. Yeah. I do believe we'll see that in one of the games. I also believe that he's going to go for a crazy Night as all in, just with Lings and Link Queens. Queen, yeah. yeah. In one of these games, so far this seems to be rather standard. He's playing in a very macro-oriented manner. But we also know, Elaser that if he does fall behind after a macro game, he likes to... Uh, Spice things up a little bit in game two and game three. Oh, yeah. Uh, we saw a very one sided series against Petit Drogo at the most recent WCS Circuit tournament where Laser came in with oh, yeah. very well prepared cheeses and, uh, and caught him out. Uh, you know, I love that there's been a spore put at every base so early. Uh, normally, Zergs try to skip on that, but respecting the oracles of Trap is a laser. 
and he's already up to, I think, five or six queens. That's a really uh, just huge amount of respect shown for his opponent. The Adepts are going to join up and look to pressure here. Yeah, I wouldn't commit to that shade, and Trap agrees with me. Obviously, you don't really want to shade on top of queens ever, and if you do want to shade into a base that is protected, at least make sure that you can tuck those Adepts between the mineral patches, because then even if there are a couple of links and queens in position, they should still be able to get at least a drone or two. And if the Zerg player doesn't pull the drones away immediately, you can actually get four or five very quickly. Ooh, good rotation on the Queens. going to get a few hits. How much is in the main base pick? The Only main base is actually quite exposed. Oh. Only one Queen there. The Spore Crawler focusing on that weakened Oracle, but good pullbacks there. Trap leaves the two healthy Oracles in the mineral line. It's going to get eight, nine, ten. Ah, when Oracle goes down, he's starting to lose those air units, Roddy. Yep, and the other one is actually so low on HP, right? Focus fire, laser, not paying attention. I absolutely do believe that he would have been able to pick off that second Oracle there as well, if he was looking at the Queen and which Oracle it was firing at. Now, I know that 10 drones look spectacular, and people probably are like, oh, Elaze is in trouble. I actually think 10 drones is not that bad. This is an opening that's meant to do a lot of damage, is he just going to follow this he's, up? It's an eight, gate, eight gateways, man. The Warp Prism's out. I mean, he's going pretty much all in. It looks like he wants to drop a third Nexus. But with that many gateways, he's got to push in with this attack. And I think the Hydra Den, I don't know if it finished, but he's not going to use that. He just needs Roaches yeah. and lots of Ravages yep. to deal with those Force Fields. Ravages are the most important unit here. He's obviously not going to be able to flank the Warp Prism or anything like that. But there is a Spine Crawler on the way as well. It's just a single Mortal. Look at that Oracle. Oh, he so can't get Force Fielded. Those queens no. have got to be very careful. If they get trapped down that ramp, that'll be huge. I don't mind him trying to go for that oracle, though, because these oracles are going to be very annoying. These zealots are slow, by the way. Where is charge? No charge yeah, at all. Yeah, no, no. This is a stalker push. He's going to be warping in mostly stalkers and sentries. Only zealots to counter the zerglings. This is a very low-tech uh, push, and he just does not have that many force fields. Going up that ramp is so hard, though, and that spine crawler is so freaking annoying, because if you commit to the spine, the spine can get healed as well by these queens. It's just so awkward, and a lot of these units don't deal a lot of damage the spine only the immortal and the stalkers maybe to some degree i actually think this is looking absolutely fantastic by laser and if i was trapped i wouldn't commit to this at all uh dude he's, he's been on up 20 workers now for like two minutes i yeah. mean absolutely fantastic i got to agree with you i was about to say how do you play this out as trap and he seems to think the robotic support bay is the go-to disruptors is actually a unit trap is the only protoss we really see at the pro level using disruptors a lot against zerg and it's a great comeback unit. Whenever he's behind against a Zerg player, they've got a lot of Roaches and Ravages. He loves those Disruptors. Yep, we've seen a couple of Colossus openings this event. We saw it yesterday a lot by Hero as we do have a skirmish here down this ramp. And Trap is actually doing, fields. Yeah, Trap is doing this all right so far, but it's important that he doesn't overcommit. He wants to stay around. He's going to wipe in a few more Stalkers, but only with a single Immortal here. Maybe the Oracles can actually help out against the Ravages. Oh, the Sentries are all gone now. I mean, you've Oracle just got a survives. bunch of uh, Immortals there just not really doing much. The Stalkers should be able to get home. Okay, then fi Oracle finally goes down. It's hard to chase, though, if there's two Oracles hovering above your Ravages, because Oracles definitely deal quite some damage. There we do have that Disruptor. We mentioned the Colossus a little bit. I think Colossus can be useful, but this is not the game for it. Yeah. Trap is down 50 supply, and Colossus are not a unit that will turn around a 50 supply deficit, unless you maybe go up against pure Zerglings or something, but we know that's not the case, so I think Disruptors make a lot more sense here. You know, a few good disruptor shots could be massive. Uh, we were seeing actually a bit of robotics, uh, uh, warp prism speed come in with disruptors in some other games, uh, you know, earlier in this tournament. I wonder if we might see something like that. Of course, for now, it's just about trying to catch up in the army and then secure a fourth base. It's going to be a very defensive setup here for Trap, adding the Templar archives, finally getting the upgrade started on the forge and trying to catch on up a laser here. It looks like he's very comfortable to just drone that fourth base. I'd be very happy for a laser to head towards Hive and just defend this game out. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Well, for a second start at his second infestation pit there, but he's like, wait a minute, I already have an infestation pit. So he cancels it, he goes up to a Hive. Now I do al also believe though, that if you are this far ahead, you kind of want to make something happen. Now, of course, this is Thunderbird, and it's somewhat hard to break a Protoss that's just chilling on three bases, especially going up a ramp against Disruptors as well. I mean, maybe I trying to make a pre Broodlord attack, maybe with just a couple Vipers, I think that could be somewhat useful. Keep Keeping them off a of fourth base is definitely a good goal there, yeah. right? That fourth base, suddenly the Protoss is go in the open, so... Yeah, you should be able to deny that, but you know what? Trap here, just using a couple of Immortals, picks off four workers there, is just keeping a laser busy. And these Phoenix are going to scout that Hive and Spire, and he's going to realize, oh god, he's on the clock. <laughs> he knows he's only got about two minutes until Broodlords are going to be hitting the field.
Yeah, it's gonna take a little while though, right? Because he doesn't have Corruptors yet, then he needs to get the Greatest Fire. And he lays his max out. I'd really be kind of sad. Whoa, no cancel on that hatchery, by the way. That's a nice little pick up for Trap. Yeah. I mean, Trap was down 60 supply or so. It really feels that Trap is getting away with his fort base when he shoots it. Elaser has so many units, and all of them are just chasing a war prism. Like, just a couple of links could be chasing this war yeah. prism, because it's just two immortals inside of it. You can defend with queens. He should have been a little more active with all the roaches he has out. Yeah, he's getting he's getting picked apart a little bit by it. That fifth base kind of... And this is not game-ending damage, but it's just damage that should not be happening right now. Showing just a little bit of a, uh, a shaky mid-game here is a laser. He's still got the advantage, but he's forgotten his Greatest Fire. He's got his Corruptors on the way. The Greatest Fire has not started. I, I think that's a mistake. I think he thinks it's on the way. He thinks it's about to finish. Uh, that's a really big mistake. He's got to realize sooner rather than later. He's got the money, and that's the most important part of his build right now, getting that Spire upgraded. Yep, I mean, now Elaze is finally going to send a couple of units to the other side of the map. There we do have our Greatest Spire, but Elaze has been around 190 supply for quite some time. Time. He's gonna try to set up some sort of a flank here, but obviously the minerals are still up in the middle of the map. I think those rocks are still up as well. So I don't think he's gonna be able to get too much done. Maybe we are gonna get ready for that next phase in the game. Trap is gonna scout the main base of Elaser one more time. And now we'll see that that great Aspire is morphing. Oh, nice stasis trap over here. And uh, that Roachling's all gonna disappear. Will be quickly replaced by Corruptors and Broodlords. Uh, I haven't seen Pathogen Glands just yet, I don't believe. I would love to see a bit of Infested Tech come out. Even just a few Fungals is going to be really big because we are seeing Trap go for Blink here. He's going for a massively powerful ground army. Infested is definitely going to add some power to that Broodlord tech. No, I absolutely loved Elaze's position a while ago. I'm loving it a lot less right now. Like, I know he's got a great Spire on the way. He's got a lot of Banings here in the mix as well, but a couple of Colossus are going to make it hard for these Banings to connect. The delay on that great Spire is deadly right now. Trap's going to push in here. Elaze's got 30 free supply. He's only got seven Corruptors ready to morph into Broodlords. Elaze here, he's given his opponent an opportunity. He's going to start morphing those Broodlords in the back of the natural. Getting ready here to flank. He's got to stay away from those disruptor shots. They are so frightening for these roaches. Kind of feels like the prism could come a little bit closer. I think the one thing that is scaring Trap here a little bit is that he did not have an observer with his push. Mm. And going that deep onto creep without an observer is always very scary. There was an oracle in the mix, but you don't really want to waste all of your energy of the oracle to just reveal a couple of creep tumors because you're always going to miss one or two anyway. Yeah. I think he lays it a little bit fortunate there. Now at least he got his root lords out. But this is not like that dream late game of the Zerg, right? As we do have a lot of Banelings, by the way, heading oh. towards the sport base. Lots of cannons and a couple of Immortals going to come forward. A quick... <laughs> oh! Pylon does go down. It instantly gets blasted, though. And good fall on the probes. Doesn't really lose any. Plus two melee not quite finished just yet. The Infested transition is now starting. But a laser doesn't have a big mineral bank, giving exactly. his opponent a bit of space in this game. Doesn't have a big mineral bank and also doesn't have a million spines and spores, right? Like Broodlord in Faster, you know, the ideal composition late game with a million sports is incredibly powerful. And we know that it's hard for Protoss to deal with. But right now, Elaze is nowhere near that, like, unbeatable yeah. stage, as some people call it. Because he's, he's going to be very weak against War Prisms. He really doesn't have a lot in his main base or in, you know, like, his third, his natural. Yeah. So there's a lot of weak spots. Uh, we are going to get a Mothership coming out of Trap. I don't know how you feel about it, Pig. I'm never that big of a fan. I mean, it definitely has some power to it, the cloaking and so on. I don't think it suddenly shifts things in Protoss's favor. Overseer is an easy what? fix for it. Fungals are good, and you're a parasite. Obviously, can turn that mothership against you. This is kind of sick. What is this? A couple of stalkers, a couple of immortals, just a little bit of everything. Oracle flies over spore crawlers. We all go down. Yes, there are overlords spotting this, but a triple prism. One of these prisms is most likely going to make it into main base. But he doesn't have that much free supply, it's, though. It's the only thing happening right now. There's nothing else really. I mean, there's some zealots now moving through the bottom middle of the map. But the whole point here is to pick yeah, the up the Zerg or Greatest apart. Fire. Oh, no. Greatest yeah. Fire? Yeah, you have two Immortals. They'll make quick work of that. Corruptor's starting to work on those warp prisms, but the Archon's actually going to take those down, which means he'll be able to evacuate this army. Immortal is oh. not firing anymore at the Greatest Fire. Why is he not killing it? Oh, no. Loses everything except an Archon and even that's going to go down. Uh, his army's moved down to the bottom side of the map now. He's going to look for a base snipe. A laser going to quickly try and get down there to defend that. He's got to get that army down. But uh, not a great trade there for Trap so far. He's starting a Tempest transition. He needs more damage. He's got to put a dent in a laser's economy here. Yeah, suddenly there's quite a few Infestors out. Disruptors can be used for against Infested Terrans, but obviously you need more 
And they can't just be staying there because then Broodlords will be able to take care of these disruptors. I love the idea of a triple prism heading into the main base and just going for a mass warp in. Or at least do something else, like you yeah. said, right? Like that army, I feel like if it would have hit at the same time as those prisms in the main base, there's a good chance that that Protoss army picks up the fifth base. Now, of course, in trap is defense. He is kind of transitioning, so he's freeing up a little bit of supply as well. I am just not that big of a believer in the Tempest. <laughs> No, the Tempest is a, it's a good unit in terms of picking away from range. The problem is it's very uh, low impact. It does yeah. a small amount of damage, needs a long duration of time. Often what we see is it's getting damage for free, damage for free, looks good, that's nice, you're picking away, you've done a little bit of damage, and then they all get neuroparasited and they all just fall out of the sky instantly. They're yep. so uh, fragile as a unit, and especially when you go Mass Tempest, which seems to be a very popular style at the moment, that's a style, I'm, I'm, I'm going on your side as well, Roddy. We both completely agree that we don't really like it. Now, it's still mostly a ground army at this point. It's not Mass Tempest just yet. And there is a Blink Stalker attack on the north I side. I love this. Yeah, I really love this, because now this is going to make it a lot harder for your laser to spice things up. Trap doesn't really have to commit to this too much, I'd say. One uh, Disruptor is going to take care of two of those queens. The Stalkers are going to get cleaned up eventually. Like, imagine if there's a Prism in the main base as well during yeah. all of this, right? Like, that'd be really sick. Laser's going very high on Infestors right now. Um, I do like that he's expanding his creep spread. I think if you're going to play this mega high drone style, lots of Infestors, Broodlords, Corruptors, it's very nice. Uh, the one thing you're giving up is there's no supply for a laser that's kept for backstabs and counterattacks. So trap side of the map is basically untouched. We're not seeing those squad of 30, 40 Zerglings running around sniping down next side, something which players like Raynor and Serral were constantly doing at this stage of the game. Because of that, it's going to be a laser just trying to grind him down in the frontal engagements. Yeah, to laser's defense, I guess the first three bases are always going to be kind of hard to attack right on this map. Thunderbird's so easy to defend, but yeah. Fourth base, fifth base, would have absolutely been cool to maybe see some more baneling pressure. If I was trapped, I'd be a little bit careful here, because this is one of these armies where I feel like if one Tempest falls, all of them fall, like you yeah. exactly just said before. I don't really like where he's at right now. Like, yeah, he's getting a couple shots up, might be able to get his first Brute Lord. Yes, he does, and that's obviously nice and stuff, but this is still an incredibly fragile army that really cannot stand and fight with the Zerg army. The one way this could suddenly work out very well for Trap would be if those Broodlords get a bit too exposed and he yeah. can pick off five or six of them, you've suddenly only got about three Broodlords. You don't have any real ground army here as a laser. You can see even these Ravages and Lynx struggling with these charge zealots. Those spine crawlers aren't ready just yet. Yep, and we've got plus three. Neuro Parasite does land on three Colossi, though. Maybe that's not the end of the world. It's going to free up a lot of supply. Trap does have money. Zealots are going to be annoying, but obviously these links are very well upgraded too. Don't forget that. Yeah. Plus three is done for the Zerg links They should well. have Adrenal at this point as well, I would imagine, uh, which means they just do so much damage, right? Uh, we haven't seen Carapace upgrades queued up just yet. That's another thing I'd love to see for a laser, just to add more depth to this army. Meanwhile, Trap doing a very good job with his upgrades. He's on plus two flyer attack and plus one plasma shields. He's going to need to continue those in this game. Right? Fungo will connect with a couple of these Immortals. Broodlords will oh, get a... Disrupt the flank! Oh, that would be Whoa. sick! Connects with a couple of Infestors. Yeah, I mean, it was four. something, right? That's not bad. Not bad. It does lose, uh, you know, some of those important units, but... Elaze is really not that rich, by oh, the way. Very good revelation steal there. Ah, oh, that's, that's a really nice move. Yeah, as you said, a laser's bank, I mean, the thing is, because he was so high on the roaches and banelings earlier, he didn't build the early bank. And now, as he builds his drone count, he's on constantly putting it into static defense, right? Because of this, a laser does not have as much money as Trap. It's all going to be about, like, efficiency in the engagements. A laser can't afford to just take a few kind of bad engagements where he rolls 20 banelings in and they all get killed. He's got to be efficient uh, until his bank stabilizes at, at least a few thousand minerals. I love how Trap just warped in six, uh, six Dark Templars, actually, and warped all of those into Archons. Just ah, yeah, Dark Templars. Being gas efficient. Mm -hmm. He's like already that. thinking 20 minutes ahead of this game. It's like, eventually, I'm going to have a lot of minerals and no gas. So this is how we're going to do it from now on. I love, by the way, how he didn't mine out his main base. I don't know if that's on purpose or not, but what is that, like a little safety uh, <laughs> Those federal the... reserve or something? Like yeah. it's blocked by a fleet beacon, a dark shrine in the gateway in the middle <laughs> of the middle line, but he left quite a few resources in his main. Oh, these stalkers going to get shut down finally, the chain fungal, and uh, you can see Zerglings, when they're allowed to stand and fight, they do not care about stalkers. These links are sick. Trap now moving into carriers. So he's going to go into the uh, the kind of raw combat unit of the late game Protoss Arsenal, the carrier. Pretty good 
uh, against just about everything, but not really a specialist like these other units. I must say, I, I do think it, there is a lot of potential in the carry here, because if you look at the attack upgrades, plus three is almost done, while these Corruptors will only have plus one. If you get a couple of Infestors, and this is already very nice, Trap is getting more than just a couple of Infestors. Yeah. Land some good Storms as well, 12 more Infestors on the way. But I think the combination of well-upgraded carriers and the rest of Trap's army, and of course the ability to reinforce a battle as well with all the gateways he has, I'm starting to feel this for Trap. I really am. Like, I know that normally people look at this stage in the game, they're like, oh, this is easy for your laser. Zerg never loses this. With the upgrades, plus three is done for the carriers. I'm really starting to believe here for Trap. Yeah, we are seeing the double Spire upgrade slowly that we'll be catching up. I'm loving the link counters now. Laser being so active with this, and this is starting to put some herd on Trap. Remember, Trap's bank is all disappearing as he turns it into carriers. And uh, he also can't really afford a big, bad battle. If one player loses their army here, it will not be replaced easily. How many Infestors do you think we're at right I now? I think we're at about five. Yeah, about 25. He's been adding so many Infestors here. You can tell a laser, he's still got five in production. He's like a 25 to 30 Infestor player. Infestor Terran's not quite as powerful as they once were, but still definitely packing a good punch. All right, Neuro Parasite does land a lot of Infestor Terran. I love how he's spreading them out, by the way. That's very well done. So it's not going to be easy for one or two Storms wow. to take care of all of these Infestor Terrans. I think sometimes you just want to disengage as the Protoss, though, right? Like, yeah. yes, this looks intimidating, but Infestors do run out of it. You look at the Disruptors on the right top side. One Ooh. or two Purification Novas can take care of it. And At first it looked connect. like there was an ambush, then it looked yep. like it was more of an F2. After a little bit there, they uh, kind of waddled into their... Uh. Their 34 team. investors, that is a lot of investors. I, I gotta say, one big problem here for Trap is that he only has a single Disruptor. Like a single yeah. Disruptor is obviously not gonna do much. Maybe some Storms will land, no, he's gonna go for the feedbacks instead. Doesn't one-shot the investors anymore, does knock the energy off a handful of them, but there's a lot more where that came Disrupted from. Bungles drop. on the Interceptors going down, the Interceptors getting slowed down and blasted. Disruptor! Oh, well, that's a decent hit, right? Carrier coming in from the other side as well. Arkles on the top side, Neuro Parasite does land. I mean, this is just a super hectic battle. Yeah, I mean, we've got units coming in from all sides for Trap. Trap's now moved his main army down. He's going to start pushing into the economy of a laser. A laser has a very immobile force. He's going to try to get back to this base. He's going to have to drop a lot of Infestor Terrans, but that Infestor energy is actually getting a little bit lower right now. Those links could have actually ran into the main base, and that would have been very problematic, but... Instead, they're just going to destroy the entire wall, and I guess that works out as well. Cancel some upgrades there yep. on the Cybercore. Not bad. And we've seen Trap's economy take a hit here. He's down on the minerals. Got Archon yeah. Stalker coming in on the north side. There's no mobile units to deal with it. Trap here, I mean, he's actually going to start utilizing the mobility. I kind of love this move. Yep, and he still has that massive army, that high-tech army in the left bottom side of the map as well. He's adding more disruptors, and I really think that's what he needs right now. If Trap wants to win this game, take care of all of those investors, I don't think he can ever take a game-deciding fight with one or two Disruptors. Yep. I think he's going to need five to six. I think that's a very sweet amount. I mean, at the same time, these units getting grabbed by Fungal Neural. We've also got a Link counterattack that's hitting the third base of Trap. Might even get the Nexus there. Looks like it has been cleaned up. DT is good defensive unit there. We're going to need to see a laser starting to bring Overseers with his Zergling counterattacks if wow. he wants to be able to handle those DT walls. Elaser just pretty much burned his entire bank, by the way. Good job by Elaser saving all of those drones. Very well done. I mean, obviously, there's so many things happening that it's hard for Trap to take care of everything. We have 15 additional Corruptors, so those Corruptors are going to be very important because if Elaser loses those, he simply doesn't have the income right now to replace those. I actually disagree with Elaser taking this northern base. I think right now he's the less mobile player but he should be able to win a front on fight i'd love to see him move all these spore crawlers up to the high ground and take the rich base yeah. right in front of traps expansion i think that way you can deny one of traps bases and secure this i think trying to defend the very bottom and the very top guess what traps the more mobile player here he may be able to find an opening hit both bases at once i don't know if a laser can handle that I like how he put the Disruptors in the prism once again, but it's still just two Disruptors. I'd really love to see him just add a few more. Like, I think it's very important when these late game armies clash that you take a look at, like, is this the optimal army? The two Immortals, they don't really serve much of a purpose anymore, do they? Like, there's nothing really yeah. in the army of Elaser that the Immortals are good for. So you can say that's wasted supply. Five Archons, maybe eight Stalkers. Not a big fan. I think Stalkers, if you like, are losing a fight or like units are going down and you reinforce with Stalkers, I think that can be kind of cool. But starting the battle with Stalkers is probably not optimal, right? So Indeed. the army of Trap is good, but I do think it could be better. 
I mean, a laser here has just pushed Trap off that southern base. He's moved his spore crawlers to the high ground. Ling's hitting the top right at the same time. A laser is just shutting down Trap's economy. Trap is starting to run dry. He's going to answer in kind. Archon's running in. He's going to rotate to this north side of the map. Trap can't keep taking hits like this. It's still at a point where neither player has a massive bank. It's going to come down to who can kind of deal with the other one's army in the next big fight. Yeah, Elaze is taking a lot of economic damage as well, though, right? It's not just Trap. Like, Trap has been losing probes. Sure, these links have been very annoying. He's losing expensive units. But Elaze has also been taking a lot of damage to his own economy. Uh, he's stealing units right now. I must say, Elaze is actually playing very strong in the last minute and a half or so. Just making more and more stalkers. Four disruptors are flanking in warp prisms on the southern side of the map. They're going to look to come in and flank these infestors. This is a really cool move. Can he pull it off? It's just south of our camera. He's unloading the disruptors. Are they going to land? No! A laser with a quick pullback. Only a few infestors get clipped. Good reaction by a laser. Yeah, but feedbacks are landing as well. A laser getting now perhaps a little ahead of himself. Big storms landing on all of these corruptors. Can the carriers, can the storms take care of it? It seems oh. like the carriers are going to run out of interceptors quite quickly here as there is nothing to take care of those infested Terrans anymore. The Corruptors starting to chase them down as well with no more interceptors left. These Corruptors reigning supreme. There's only 11 Corruptors, but Stalkers there's nothing left in? to fight them. The Stalkers are coming in, but there's still so many Broodlords, right? The Broodlords yep. are going to be a massive problem here. He's going to blink underneath these Broodlords. He gets one of them, but that's probably not going to be enough. The second one, two of them are so low on HP, but it's not going to matter. GG gets called. And Elaser will take game one. I gotta say though, he made it a little harder on himself, Vic, than I feel like it ever should have been. Because yeah. it's important to think back of how this game started, right? And he defended that 8 gate 2 phase opening while being like 15 drones ahead or something. He yeah. was in a marvelous position, yet it turned into a somewhat close 28 minute game. Well, you were saying for a long time there, Roddy, definitely an opportunity to get across the map and do something. Even on Thunderbird, could have kept Trap off the fourth base. Did end up getting stuck in the mud a little bit, but spectacular Neural Parasite usage in the late game. Ends up being a dominating last fight, despite that kind of shakiness with the transition from a laser. Trap there, unable to get a footing on Thunderbird, but you know what, it was a very aggressive push from him. And Elaser was just so well prepared. You said, you know, he was ahead in workers. I think it was like 21 workers. It was insane. Yeah. Like, that sort of economy, you often see players defend with three, four, five workers ahead. You go, oh, that's a good position. A laser was massively ahead off that opening. A rough game one. Let's see how game number two goes. Up here in the top right hand side of World of Sleep is the Red Protoss player, the number two WCS Korea seed. He is Jin Air Greenway Trap. And down here in the bottom left hand side, off to a strong start, a player who comes in as a massive underdog in this tournament. He is Ego Esports. Laser. You often talk about it though, momentum is a real thing and obviously after the GS overs, the world performance by Laser, it does really feel like he's been carrying that X Factor around a little bit, right? That old oh, yeah. school swag is back. Now this is a map where we've seen the Laser do a couple of very funky builds on already. I personally think this map is a tiny bit of a nightmare. Like, if the Zerg player decides to play completely normal, it's obviously not bad for Protoss, but I feel like early game, it can get very tricky, obviously, with that wall of minerals that you have to worry about. And then, of course, rich Vespian guys is right. Like, yes, it's nice to build a whole bunch of Archons, but it can also work out very nicely for Zerg late game, as we already saw in that previous game. Yeah. The Zergs love their infestors, and rich Vespian guys, is, they help. Yeah, getting uh, getting uh, the same mining uh, as if you've got, you know, almost two full geysers with just one. A very good boost to the Zerg economy there. And uh, it's a gigantic map as well. Hard to push through with any sort of frontal push without getting flanked and surrounded. World of Sleepers, a great map for those ra uh, Ravager Banelink surrounds. You know, we've seen people try to push through and just get flanked by Ravagers and Banelinks constantly and relentlessly. Being said, saw a nice game yesterday where... Uh, 
hero did manage to kind of keep Raynor on the defensive for a long time. It was actually bullying yeah, that him was cool. around the open spaces of the map with a massive Immortal Archon army. But <laughs> I think that was a very uh, particular situation. Hero engineered a really nice lead for himself in that game. Hero is just a master of making it impossible to figure out whether or not he's actually committing, right? Normally as a Protoss player, we like to think that we have streamlined builds, you know, you cut workers here and then you push there and you can commit to a certain degree. And Hero just feels like he makes everything, every decision on the fly. It's like, how much do you have? How much can I get done? He has a couple probes, no couple probes. Like, it, it's almost, I don't know. It's really hard to explain what Hero does, but he does seem to have a pretty damn good idea of where he's at in most PVCs. I don't think Trap really plays too much like uh, Hero does, so I think we're yeah. gonna see a very different style come out here. What did you think of, like, if you go back to the final moments of everything we just saw on Thunderbird before, oh, what is the thing? He's pulled off gas in his main. Oh, is he gonna go for a good old charge on it? Oh my lord. This is gonna be one. He hasn't started charge just yet. It might be a one immortal charge. I think this is gonna be even faster than a, mar than a normal Marjorie build, right? Because if you pull off gas this early, Oh my, this is going to be an insanely hard all-in. Yeah, yeah, he's still mining gas, so he's going to queue up at least one Immortal, I think, behind it. But uh, this is just going to be a super fast charge Zealot all-in. And you know what, Laser didn't go Overlord speed. He's rushing Lair right now. Oh man, Lair is not going to help you against this. You need to get more gas mining so that you can pump roaches. If a Laser goes past 45 drones, I would say he has almost no chance of holding this. Like, he needs to stop building workers relatively early and start pumping out fighting units. Now, both gases have been taken in the natural, though, Pig. Now, that could, of course, just be a fake, guys, because Trap probably knows that there is an Overlord hovering around those gases, so he wants to give Laser the idea. What is this? Now he's getting a Dark Shrine as well. And he hasn't started the warp prism just yet. No, oh, no, no, there it, it is. Okay, right. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, okay, so it's, it's just a big old ze zealot attack. He's mining gas from the natural yeah. as well. Okay, so it's a charged zealot attack. With his and then he's going to follow up with a very surprisingly timed set of dark templars. This is a really interesting build from Trap. Let's see if a laser is prepared for it. It's such an odd timing that it's going to be coming at. Well, a laser is uh, stopping at 43 drones, actually, which really isn't that many. Two overseers on the way as well, so it's actually starting to feel that a laser should be capable of dealing with this. You're always going to have to micro a little bit. Zealots do have a lot of surface area there on this yeah. hatch that's completely exposed. But, I mean, these zealots don't have plus one, right? So, links and queens are actually quite the problem. Yeah, links and queens can deal with this, but one more zealot warping could be really scary. There aren't many roaches out right now. The zealots get on top of those zerglings. Queen still standing strong, but there we go. More zealots being warped in behind this. Only one queen left standing. There's still only a handful of roaches, and that charge is so frightening. Actually, really good job there by Trap being able to get so many of the queens. Elaza was trying to micro his queens as well, but eventually he just snuck a zealot behind enemy lines there, getting that final hit multiple times. Not a single transfuse went off during that fight. So Trap being able to get all of these queens is awesome. And you know what I also like? That he didn't warp in any DTs like right inside of that overseer, yeah. right? So Elaza might be expecting it, but hey, he doesn't know for sure yet. Right now, Trap going to try and transition into more of a macro-oriented play. He wants to get this third up, but that one is toast. The Zerglings come in. Is the Zealots? No, there's no way. Big cancel. Nice move by Elaza. Happy to trade some Zerglings to limit his opponent's economy. These Dark Templars snaking around the north side of the map. He wants those Overseers and those Roaches to be way out front at the third. If he can sneak into the back of the main in the natural, he could get a lot of worker kills. I think the next attack is going to be so difficult to deal with, though, for Elaser. Like, having that rich Vespian gas is awesome because he doesn't really have the sickest economy, so that kind of gives his own economy a little boost. But these Dark Whoa. Templars are going to hurt. The Overseers are out of position. There is not a single Spore Crawler on this map at this point. I mean, the next oh, attack man. is going to be Zealot Archon Immortal. Oh, that's just so many kills there. Saving the TTs until his opponent uh, was not on his toes. And a laser gets caught out. 11 workers, a ton of mining time going down. He's going to get a 12. Yep, 12. Worker does <laughs> go down. Prism still hanging around down here. Even going to shade in a couple of adepts. Then he can pick up again with the War Prism as well, by the way. Probably tucks him between the mineral patches, gets a couple of hits off, and then he could pick him up again with the Prism. Very nicely done there by Trap. Three more workers <laughs> brings cool. the tally up to 15, and he's got a third base that's about to finish. 51 workers Trap here. He's adding sentries to his Immortal Archon Force. He suddenly realizes, yep, I am in control of this game. I love this opening. You know, we often think about pulling off gas as something that allows you to hit a very fast all-in attack. But we were talking at this game about how Hero is very good at making his opponent not know whether he's committing or not. Well, that's exactly the problem yeah. with this build that Trap's done. Trap gets 
the pressure out fast, but it's not eight gateways. It's just three or four gateways warping in some zealots. He hits a sharp pressure behind it. Third Nexus, Immortals. He's adding the upgrades, warping in the sentries. So it's a very sharp pressure into the macro play. He's got another curveball behind it with a surprise Dark Templar timing. This is a very hard build to just kind of be ready for as a Zerg. You don't see this combination of timings. This is the kind of stuff we want to see at the Global Finals, right? People coming up with new little weird things. And of course, we've seen all of these units work together before. It's not like we see units we've never seen before. It's just the way that Trap is doing all of this is really cool. It's hard for us to figure out what he's doing. Imagine how difficult it is for Elaze to figure out what he's actually going up against. Interestingly to see a Hydra transition from a laser. He's been down in the economy this whole time, so I'm not sure if it'll work, but I think uh, there's a bit of a funny metagame going on. A lot of players delaying or not going for Storm at all in their matches because of the Ravager Baneling being so popular. So a laser here starts with Roach, it starts with Roach Bane, but he's going to transition into the Hydra list like specifically lot, to stop those big pushes, right? Everyone says, hey, Ark on Immortals, great versus Ravager Baneling, but if you run into an Ark of Hydra lists, Immortals and Archons are not going to cut it. Trap did scout it though, right? So he technically has a lot of time to get ready for it. He fires up Storm as well, but he's also getting a second Robo. So it could just be a lot of Archons Immortal Storm, but he could eventually decide to add a Robo Bay as well. And then it doesn't even matter whether it's Disruptors or Colossus, because both are going to be pretty damn fantastic against the Hydra. Laser now, he has managed to catch back up in economy. He's got fantastic creep spread. Second evolution chamber being added on as well. I like that Elaze's delaying his hive tech in this game. I think he recognizes he's a bit behind. He needs to stay on this lair tech just to make sure he doesn't simply get bopped by the next Protoss move out. But what do you think, like, what's the plan here for Elaze, right? He's going to build up a bunch of Hydras, just attack when he's maxed out on, like, Hydra, Ling, Bane, Roach? Is, I, th I think he's got to play a scrappy game. I think recognizing the situation you're in when you're behind a Zerg, you've got to say, look, I probably can't kill him with a front-on attack, but maybe some Bane Link drops, maybe some run buys here and there, and look for the big surrounds. I think on this map specifically, there's so many wide-open areas that even when there's a good Immortal Arc on Storm count out, if you get a good angle on that, a good surround, you can absolutely clear a very large Protoss ground army as long as you have enough Banelings. Yeah, you're going to need the absolute dream engagement though, but he is obviously still mining of that rich Vespian gas, and yes, it could be a lot of Infestors, but it could also be a lot of Banelings, right? It's going to help out there a little bit. He was over 70 workers, so with that gas, he does have a pretty strong economy. I don't think Trap really needs to get too feisty or funky right now. Players are worried about the Broodlords though, right? Yeah, yeah I, I get it, but I mean, you can scout for that. Storms will land. <laughs> Actually, these Banelings may have looked bad, but I think that's pretty decent. He took care of uh, a lot of these cannons and batteries there. I mean, there was an infestation pit, I believe, that finished off. But I mean, the hive is not even started yet. Yeah. So you want to be very careful with all of those High Templars with Storm. You know, I like what you're saying, Roddy. I think definitely Trap has the advantage. and. The way he loses this game is getting a bit over eager yep. and taking that bad fight. And I, I really do think that it's not a bad choice for a laser to do this. I think when you're behind on such a so big map, nice. it's a good idea to play like this. Tons of Banes, Hydras, the double upgrades. It's just a massive, powerful lair tech army. Now, what I love about Trap as a player, though, is this scouting has not stopped. He's got Zealots getting ready to backstab. He's shutting down his opponent's attacks, and he's just progressing his tech. I, if he just keeps scouting, and doesn't overcommit and is very patient. I definitely think this is a pretty clear path to the advantage and the eventual victory. And he's going up the ramp here. He's feeling confident, but he's got to be careful because there are banelings pretty much everywhere. That one Archon could get surrounded by links. And now the hive starts. But Elaza also wants to get a fight going. He wants to engage from multiple angles, but there are so many storms available. A couple of cannons here as well. But There's not many Archons. Not a lot of Archons buffering this force. Good storms. Accidentally takes out his own observer. But those banelings getting massive storms. All over them, a big arc of roaches and hydras <laughs> coming in. But the wall of immortals standing strong for now. The roaches, more banelings coming in. A laser trying to crack through. I think Trap with those zealot warpings has just barely enough to hang on. A round of archons comes in from the south and cleans it up. And he's counterattacking as well during all of this. That's why Prism having a couple of zealots inside of it as well. He's going to wipe in more zealots here. These zealots do have upgrades. They are starting to do a lot better. Don't want to lose your prism here. That's a bit unnecessary, but I think Trap has done it. That was an absolutely fantastic hole. GG gets called. Trap will tie up this series. Pick the positioning there on his unit. It looked like he was in danger, but not a single freaking Bane Ling was able to connect with any of those yeah. Templars. 
beautiful movement on the High Templars, beautiful storms all around. I mean, sure, he had plenty, okay, I know, guys. <laughs> he didn't only have one of two storms, he had a lot of storms, but it's still easy to panic, it's easy to be too trigger happy. He was none of those things. Mm. A very, very well played game by Trap. A laser there, realizing that he was stuck on that lair tech for a long time, decided to pull the trigger. But his opponent, you know, as soon as he realized those links were trying to flank around, he instantly pulled back to the Nexus, pulled all of his defenses to one location. A fantastic hold for Trap. Stabilizes the series at one to one. And I think a very impressive reactive play from Trap. He is such a macro god. He kept scouting a laser. He saw the Hydrogen, as you pointed out, and he took his time with that game. The Zella backstab as well just sealed the deal there. All right, we are going to be launching into map and number three. And looking for that spot in the top eight, up here in the top left-hand side, representing Jin Air Green Wings, he is... Jin Air Green Wings, trap. I think a lot of nerds at home were taking notes during that previous game. Does that look like a fun build to play, Pick? Oh yeah, just dominating play there. And this man down here did well fighting from behind. Let's see if he can bring it back in the bottom right. Ego Esports, Elaser. Once again, Elaser has never been to the Global Finals without making it out of his group. Let's see if he can go 3-4-3. Three, three. Unfortunately for Special, uh, Special was not able to do that on Monday after making it into the playoffs two years in a row as well. Elaze, of course, missed out on the Global Finals last year, but he's back. You know what's funny as well, I almost forgot about it while I was like going over some of the uh, results of the past, is that Neep did make it uh, into the playoffs of his first Global Finals appearance in like 2016, I believe it was. Uh, he was in a group with like Patience and True, and he did yes. advance back then. But then he got bought by Dark. On the, I do remember that game on Neil Gettysburg, but I kind of forgot that that was actually in the playoffs. And of course, 2017, he had the epic game against Rogue. And uh, the Fist of Neeb. Yep, the, the Fist of Neeb. 199 <laughs> army supply, I believe it was, yep. right? And one probe. <laughs> one, one probe. It was absolutely <laughs> insane. No one has ever witnessed a true Protoss army that powerful before. Uh, an incredible, mm -hmm. incredible performances from him. You know, uh, last game, obviously, I think the, the hold in the end was awesome by Trap. But I like what you said in the middle of that game. At one point, where it's like, Elaser did have overload speed. He didn't open up with it, but he did get it eventually. I would have loved to see some Baneling traps. Like, yeah. I think Baneling runbys are absolutely fantastic in even games or where Protoss is a bit behind. But since Trap wasn't behind, but Trap was actually a bit ahead, it was a lot easier, right? Because he had plenty of money to spend on batteries, on cannons, and these run Runbys were simply not successful, while yeah. a couple of Overlord drops, like queuing up two at a time, only one of them had to be successful, and you can get 12 to 14 probes immediately. So I think that was a minor missed opportunity by Elaser. Yeah, World of Sleepers as well was a, you know, it, it was a great map, I think, to maybe split the army in half, hit the north and the south at the same time. Just dig for mistakes from your opponent while you get that backstab going on, but I think here on Acropolis, very different map. Uh, if we get to that stage, I think is gonna be looking to get a much faster hive, it's harder to pull your opponent apart with those run buys, with those counter attacks here. You're going to be much more focused on getting up to that Broodlord tech, establishing your four and five base. But uh, that's far down the road for now. Stargate opening for Trap, similar to game number one, starting with a Phoenix. And that was very well defended by a laser yep. in the first map. Um, yeah. He yeah, ended up losing, what, like 10 or 11 workers? But, but he got two oracles. Yes, well, one oracle at first, but he also got the recall, and then eventually he got the second one as well. And that's obviously, this is a very, very expensive opening for Protoss. Like, Phoenix into oracle, oracle, oracle. Like, killing 10 drones looks fantastic, but if you're delaying your third nexus during all of that, and you end up losing an oracle, as weird as it sounds, that's actually quite all right for the Zerg. Like, you need to kill more than just 10 drones and no queens or anything. The Zergs have gotten so good at delaying their tech, they don't bother with Roaches or Banelings. If you're just building Stargate units, they are just building drones, drones, drones. Uh, you know, reacting, anticipating the damage before it even comes in there. And, uh, of course, that Zerg economy is so explosive. It's, if it's able to run away, Sporkrill is once again going down at all three bases. I love that respect from a laser. Not leaving an empty base. We've seen uh, even Serral getting caught with a single base that didn't have a Sporkrill. It was relying on Queens and kept getting punished. 
uh, in some of his series, even though he did end up victorious. Oracle's going to come in, is going to grab three drones, will get a fourth. Very nice start there. It does take a lot of damage on the Oracle, though. I love that, because I felt like, I think you can get one more. That's what I'm thinking to myself. It's like, I would definitely go for one more drone. <laughs> Guess what? That would have been the end of the Oracle, okay? Trap just knows exactly when he has to get out of there. And I mean, in Saddle's defense, by the way, I guess you're referring to Thunderbird. He was knight as all inning, and I guess you don't want to get too many spore callers. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, he lost 20 drones, but then he won the game with his knights and queens. So it's like, well, I guess that's a trade that most Zerg players are willing to make. Yep, the uh, the knightess plays. We haven't seen any this series just yet from Elaza. It is, will uh, come. It has to. Like, this is Elaza, okay? There's no freaking way that he plays an entire best of five <laughs> without some knightess networks. You know, Nidus Swarmo is something which uh, a lot of the players have been using as well, but uh, so many options with it. Those oracles coming around the north side. What I really loved about Elaza previously is he was really on point with moving his queens to the edge of the map. A lot of the time those oracles will try to bypass the third and run in on the natural. And that's very powerful because you can see that spore on the natural, it's actually very far to the left. I think this is going to hurt. Elaza has been droning absolutely non-stop. I believe if Trap right now goes with those two adapts, those three oracles, I think Trap can get a lot of damage done here. The queens seem to be a tiny bit out of position as well. I actually would have loved to see maybe the oracles try to go for the natural and then the adapt yeah. shade into this base, right? Absolutely. Uh, we are going to see a Shade come in to follow this up now. And uh, Trap is going to pick off at least a couple of workers here. It does get three. Uh, fourth good. one. Uh, Not bad. I mean, it's actually very good. He's even in the works at this point. 55 against 55. All three Oracles are still alive. Oracles will activate. Bulls are being one. Ooh. Oracle takes a lot of damage, but Trap saves it again. Nice. He's so freaking good, and <laughs> he wants more. <laughs> this guy's so good with Oracles. It's actually absolutely unreal. He's got his third base going up behind it. Zergling's going to poke at that. They should not be able to stop that. You can see two adepts wedged between the pylons, but those probes a little bit exposed there. Good nice force field. Though. Force field. Yep. Those Zerglings are trapped. They'll get one more probe, so that's something, but obviously quite a right here for trap. Yep. Trap, trap. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> trap just keeps on trapping, isn't it? Oh my god. I wouldn't mind seeing some stasis traps on this map as well, actually. Big stuff. <laughs> I mean, he does have three oracles, right? <laughs> so we're going to get a Baneling Nest and a Hydra, then at the same time, Elaza will fire up 13 more drones. There's a good chance that we're going to not see him rush into Hive this game, right? He's losing more drones. So these oracles have been absolutely ridiculous. The queens have been oh out of position. One oracle might finally go down oh. here. Yes, one oracle finally goes down. The second one could go down as well. Is he paying attention? Maybe it's out of range, actually. Oh, he actually targeted it there. Got one hit on it, yeah. couldn't quite finish it. Uh, you know, 10 workers again, though. This is really keeping Elaza's economy from exploding to where he wants it to be. Oh, I think he's going to move out. I think he's going to try to cancel the fourth base of Elaza. Like, if Elaza would have taken the right top, that would have never happened, right? This move out would have not have happened. But Trap, seeing that Elaza is taking the base in the middle, even though he's got Storm on the way, even though he's got upgrades on the way and he's got a strong economy, I think he wants to do something about it. Elaser's even taking a fifth during all of this, by the way. Yeah, he's already building Hydra Tech. I mean, if you're taking a uh, fifth, losing the fourth is not all that bad. He's got a squad of Roaches. Hydras are on the way. Muscular Augment's about halfway finished. Those Roaches definitely give you a little bit of pause. But uh, I'm worried here, man. Like, yes, there are three Ravages, but there's quite a few Force Fields available as well. The Argons are going to show up eventually. And I mean, you can say, like, losing the fourth is not that bad if you have a fifth. But the fifth is even further away. Oh, nice Force Fields. Traps are Hydra. The other Roaches wriggle out, though. Good maneuvering. Yeah, he's got to give it up. You can't afford, because if you lose your army, things get really bad here as a laser. I want the strap. No, yet about the fifth. I don't think so. He's just retreating, but you'll find it. And that's a free that's a free cancel there. He laser just canceled it before even try. I mean, this is bad, right? With this style that the laser is playing, what did he got there? Was that an oracle? I guess it was an oracle. Something exploded. Yeah. Or observer, maybe, actually. I think an observer got picked up there. But I mean, this is bad, right? With this style that the laser is playing and the amount of units that the laser is working with, he doesn't want to be a three-base Zerg at all. He wants to be a four or indeed a five-base Zerg. I mean, he's going to try to counterattack and do something about this fourth base of Trap, but I'm not really believing in this counterattack, Vic. Well, right now he's acting like he's got a scary army and Trap is respecting <laughs> it. But Trap's army is just better than his. Yep. Like, if they end up clashing, Force Fields are going to split that army in half. The Immortals and Archons are going to destroy the Roaches in a matter of seconds. The Hydras don't even have the range upgrade just yet. Uh, Double Evo now starts up at almost nine minutes for a laser. He is simply behind in every regard in this game. It feels like things are not really connecting anymore for Elaze's build, right? With uh, like all of these drones going down and the hatcheries being cancelled. He's right now sitting on 1,200 gas. 
not really a proper way to spend it. The infestation pit is about to finish up. But this is also not really the army where infestors are the dream, right? Like, infestors yeah. don't really kill that well together with roaches and hydras because they'll get blocked. I mean, all of these units will just get in each other's way. They'll you clump up nicely for Storm. Yes. That's, that's about <laughs> it. Yeah, more disruptors, right? Ooh, this is a good catch. Uh, yeah, little little freebie there, double oracle. That shuts down a lot of traps. Map vision trap already going up to Fleet Beacon. Uh, I mean, it's nice to set up for the late game. But I think Trap's going to have some windows to do some damage well before then. Yep, and he absolutely should right as well, since this game has been going so freaking well for him. Losing those oracles does sting, because tagging the army is so nice, especially if you have to get on creep. But if we take a look at the minimap, this is not one of those scenarios where we're like, wow, the creep is out of control, right? Like, the oh, creep yeah. is, I don't want to say non-existent, but I think Trap has been doing a very good job in containing it. And that's super important, especially when you go up against uh, unit compositions like the one that he laser has in this game. I really like the fact that it, oh, oh, Laser's army on the north does get caught. He's got to pull that back. He cannot engage on that north side. A laser just loses all of his hydras on the top side. Uh, we didn't catch that on camera, but he was meant to run away, and I think he miscontrolled that while focusing on the southern fight. The whole point here is a laser's trying to keep Trap at home. He doesn't want Trap to be able to push across the map, but look at that. Trap just sends two zealots into the mineral line, shuts down the army on the north. A laser needs to be handling these skirmishes better. If he doesn't, Trap is going to be knocking on his door with a gigantic army. I must say, this is good by laser keeping a couple of hydras in the main base shutting down the prism is very nice but yeah trap is getting a mothership and that's cool and all like motherships are good against uh, what laser currently has but it also takes a very long time to build it right and i'd be sad to see trap not do anything for the next minute and a half in this game because i feel like he's got the better army he yeah. really has the better army as the superior upgrades by far it's 2-0 against oh. nothing he's got storm trap needs to go and it seems like he wants to go i mean it's mostly hydras roaches and ravages that's not a good army for a laser yeah he's maxed out almost but none of that is in banelings he's got what 20 banelings there that's not enough you need a lot more a ling drop does try to respond but that is uh -oh. not enough banelings on for a laser on three banelings are going to try to connect with the high templars but trap with his wall of immortals keeps all of the high templars safe drops a couple of storms gets the fifth base during all of this and i think he's making all the correct calls at this point big you don't want to give he lays the time to just get up to brute lords this seems like a decent engagement at first for the links but trap oh. simply has way too many units yeah the zealots get in the mineral line at the same time banelings are going to find those zealots and get some good hits but a laser just has nothing to work with a handful of ravages and hydra is not going to be able to stand up to that army i mean his army was just blanketed by storm the immortals were unable to be focused down there's even stalkers taking out a lonely sad corrupter that was trying to get the prism <laughs> trap gonna crush game at number three taking the 2-1 lead that oracle play is something else it really is that's what won him the game yeah. these oracles they stayed alive forever they got so many drones they got queens they got everything you could potentially dream of as a protos and because they did so much damage it made it so easy for trap to get a cancel on the fourth base and with that a cancel on the fifth base as well and with the units that Elaser was building as a three base zerg you will never get anything done against the protos as good as trap a night and day difference there from the first map. The Korean Protoss starting to assert himself. I can't wait to see where the rest of the series goes. Guys, we'll be back after a very short break.
Graf versus Eliza, the number two seed out of Korea. One of the most consistent players in Korea this year, rising to take the title of best Protoss. Up against the underdog Zerg from Poland, a player who's got a big history at BlizzCon at the WCS Global Finals playoffs. But he's got a very tough group in front of him. Absolutely, going up against Trap here is difficult. We are getting ready to hop into Disco Bloodbath. I say Big Bap, I say Nidus Big Bap. Oh, you think Laser's gonna bring out some uh, some cheeses on this one? I am pretty damn certain about it. The players are ready, the game is ready. Let's hop into Disco Bloodbath. Down here in the bottom right hand side of Disco Bloodbath. In the red, the Protoss player he is. Jinair Greenwings, Trap. Showing us some absolutely impeccable Oracle control. Best in the business, if you ask me. Absolutely. And a uh, player who had a great defense against it in the first map. Let's see if he can do it again up here in the top left. In the blue, he is. Ego Esports, Elazer. A lot of the maps are big in this current map of StarCraft 2. I'm gonna say this is the biggest of them all, right? Like this map just feels absolutely, uh, it feels like Big Ape. Like this is massive, <laughs> okay? Oh, we're getting a forge oh. over here. All right, Trap is gonna be the one to spice things up. Now Trap's I also- so good, man. It's, it's this variety that makes him so scary. He makes in general is pretty good against weird stuff. That gas was like 106, 107, so there's a good chance that he just wanted to open up with Overlord speed, but that is gonna help a little bit. Just having gas a few seconds quicker, right? Eat, sleep, trap, repeat. I can get behind it. That Overlord is keeping a close eye on it. Now, Elaze has obviously gone up against this kind of stuff many, many times in the past. Just pulls one drone. He's yeah. not gonna try and fight this. Because he knows that once the probe is there, the first pylon is up, it's too late. Unless yeah. trap messes up. In this position, at this level, yeah, yeah there's no way. So. I mean, just keeping a drone down there potentially to to make sure those pylons, uh, you know, finish. But no, instant cancel. He's gonna go and take the third base. No second gas being taken. Will we see a spine crawler? Not sure. No second gas, no spine. I mean, you say that right, but I, rem I remember a couple of cannon rushes at the global finals last year that didn't really work out that well. Yeah, I mean, we've seen a lot of <laughs> a lot of the best Protoss players in the world yeah. in StarCraft 2 have a history of some of the worst cannon rushes we've ever seen. It is amazing, right, how it's, that's possible. Oh, like. it's it's incredible. <laughs> like, you know, you go go to Printf's uh, Twitter feed right after yeah. we watch some of those cannon rushes, and he's like, how are they doing it so wrong? And the funny <laughs> thing is that they are right. Like, those cannon rushes that do it for a living every single day, they are right. Their cannon rushes are actually better than yeah. the cannon rushes of the best players in the world. Now, of course, as soon as we have more than three units, these guys will all shine the cannon rushes again. But when it comes to the initial side, I must say, Trap did this in a pretty optimal manner, though, right? Like, single cannon, single pylon, cancel yeah. the pylons that he didn't need. This was not a showtime or stats, build four pylons and four yeah. cannons to get the cancel. Uh, you know, he's, he's really done a minimalistic, immediately gone into the expansion. He's just disrupted a laser's build, and a laser's still committing to a few roaches here. Which I find interesting. It makes me think he wants to do a cheesy uh, attack across the map, maybe. But this attack, this map is so freaking big, though. That like, what are a couple of ravages going to accomplish? Yeah, I mean, maybe he's just worried about a robo getting built here, so he's just getting these ravages as insurance. He can also scare trap potentially. Trap's gonna look, but he'll see more drones coming down. And even though he sees some ravages, I think I'll trap with a such a fast target, like I don't think this worries him at all. I would still get a battery. I think getting a battery here doesn't really hurt you. Uh, you could say it's not necessary because he can always open up Oracle and Oracles are fantastic against Ravages. But I guess as long as he has these adepts on the other side of the map, but if you don't see any drones here, you know that the natural is quite late as well. Yep. Uh, I guess he doesn't need it, right? Like these guys, they just don't want to spend any minerals they don't need to spend. Yeah, I mean, these adepts are confirming, right? Yeah. He knows the Ravages are still chasing them. If those Ravages weren't chasing them, I'm sure he'd be putting shield batteries yeah. down, might be completing his wall off, but he hasn't really seen anything just yet. Does get one drone, wedges uh, wedges the adept in the minerals, Gets two drones. A second. Very nice, gonna Good get a third. Us. Oh my goodness, that's so much. Yeah, such a, such a low economy situation here. Even though there's a yeah. third hatch on the way, you're going, oh, it's not too bad, a laser can catch up. 
but we've got oracles already onto the field. One oracle is popping out right now, another one on the way. Uh, Elise's got spores building, they're not ready just yet. Any drone that goes down in the next minute or two is a huge win for Trap. Yep. Don't forget, he only had 30 drones to begin with, so losing 3 drones, you're literally losing 10% of your economy. Like, that's massive. That is massive yeah. in any state, but especially early on, because these economies need to snowball, they need to grow as quickly as possible. There is a spore crawler here, though, so these drones are safe. It's but be these careful. oracles are going to find some drones that are being uh, transferred between these bases. Oh. Yeah, laser has got to be quick with those tricks. Doesn't have enough minerals for the spore crawler trick there so he could only save the one in the extractor this is really bad i think for elaser yeah because i have the feeling this is going to continue for the next two and a half three minutes he's going to end up losing drone after drone after drone the left hand side of the main mineral line is open elaser's like he likes to put these spores on the kind of forward edge yeah. but the thing is on this map i think you need a second spore crawler in that main before your opponent gets three oracles and right now i mean he's accidentally let a spore crawler finish in between the bases those minerals i, I talked about that left hand side there it's wide open the drone pulls quick but a laser cannot afford these losses right oh now my goodness. this is so painful i mean the, the oracle oh control man. once again by trap getting seven drones here i mean you gotta appreciate it because this kind of stuff looks easy and then people always ask me it's like why don't you build oracles i'm like because it's hard okay <laughs> my oracles i feel like oracles have always been kind of weird units right because they yeah. they glide a little bit they slide unlike almost every other unit in starcraft 2 that feels so accurate when they stop these units they keep on moving a little bit there is an art form i mean yeah. you have to keep them moving even when you're target firing because if they ever stop they accelerate really slowly from a standstill so you kind of have to keep them moving quickly if you ever let them freeze up you just can't get them moving properly again so there's a real art form players like trap have perfected it over thousands and thousands of games just getting so good at that oracle control and another four workers i mean a laser's doing a great job of never getting supply blocked until this exact moment as i say that good job pig uh and droning as hard <laughs> as he can he's lost a lot of workers but he's still neck and neck in the drone count and i actually find that so impressive yeah, but with how on top of the harassment traps but he's got nothing though right he's got zero units out at this point other than a couple of queens so even just like a couple of adapts are going to mess him up here a little bit yeah. i think if trap decides to wipe in like even just five units here this would have already been so problematic like yes he is trying to keep up in economy but at the cost of pretty much sacrificing everything else i mean i guess at this point the only thing that elaser can do is just to hope that he survives until very late game i predicted the nighters in the beginning of the game you can't possibly nighters in games like this after you got cannon rush after you lose this amount of drones yep ah uh, queen in the open as well gets uh, taken down one spore not a good amount of defense for this mineral line trap happy to lose an oracle there because you know what oh 16 God. 17 18 workers Loses two oracles, but well worth it. Elaser's economy down in the dumps. Trap all over him with his sky harassment. I do feel that if you start losing your oracles, you want to follow it up with some real aggression, though, right? Because, like, otherwise, all the hard work you've done is... No, I don't want to say for nothing, but then you give your opponent all the time to just bounce back and recover. Like, at 60 drones, if Trap just moves out now, even if Elaser is forced to make a million roaches, that's really going to hurt him. He's still at three base zerk. I like the fact that Trap is moving out. I honestly think he can start committing as well because he's got a couple sentries in the mix. He's got three immortals. And what does Elaza truly have to work with right now? Yeah, I mean, this is such a powerful push. Trap obviously coming into this series as the clear favorite, one of the big favorites in this group. He's going to make a push here, morphing some Archons, Immortals coming forwards. This is such a scary attack. A laser. He's the underdog here. He's trying to hang on for dear life. He needs a few more minutes to catch up in this game. Trap is not giving him that time. Trap is probably going to use the Oracle as well to drop a stasis in the natural during all of this. Like, I can already feel that one coming. He's going to move forward. These Zealots are going to be very difficult to deal with. These Immortals pack a big points. The Queen's get zoned out immediately. Elaser is in all the trouble. Those two Immortals just laying waste to this Zerg army smashing through the force fields, splitting everything up, trapping it up. Zealots getting on the third mineral line. The Oracle comes in to finish the party and trap there. A shaky start in map number one, but from there he just got better and better until that final game he was all over the laser. That Oracle control uh, almost leaves me speechless. Like it really doesn't get much better than that. It must be an absolute nightmare to play against. The laser as well with like kind of the funky positioning indeed on the spores a couple of times. I mean, he just got punished for it. And it all started with that little cannon rush as well. Just phenomenal play by Trap. Very, very impressive performance here in the first best of five of the day. Of course, he needs a lot more to make it into the playoffs, but that looked good, Vic. You know, I love it when a player brings in such good plans across the maps. We saw a really cool 